So moving on from here, we want to create a user, and then we want to actually uh, strengthen our our users, give them roles, give them passwords, encrypted passwords, and like that. But first, in order to do that, we have to create a user. We have to start uh, from somewhere. Now you notice when I hear click on create users, it pushes me to login. And the reason is, is because when I user controller here, it says that in order to create a user, I have to be logged in. Not as anything in particular, but I got to be logged in. Well, if I just try logging in here, it's going to say, I, you don't recognize you. Well, where is that authenticating? We're well, over here in one of our components, this user identity component here. This is where it actually gets authenticated. And you can see that built-in, hard-coded, is username and password combos. We've got demo, demo, and admin, admin. So I'm going to log in as admin, admin. That's, again, hard-coded into the code here. I could put anything there. But we want it to do in the database lookup. So now when I log in, it allows me to create the user. Now I'm going to probably create this user and then delete this, this user. But right now we're just going to create this user so that we can move forward. I just put some dumb dates in here for now just so that I could create the user. So here is the user. And I am logged in as admin. Username Kurt Clement. Uh, and password is password. Well, where did that go? Well, let's go look at our database here. And if we go to users, you can see that there's one user, Kirk Clement, with the password, password, date created, and last updated are both bogus things. But I finally have a user here. And what I want to do now is I want to start talking about roles and authentication, roles-based uh, authentication. So what we'll do is, first of all, discuss what does that mean. Here's just a simple slide that kind of outlines the kind of items that we'll have in our roles-based authentication. First of all, we have uh, roles like super user, user, product manager, all sorts of things here. And then they have tasks. They can manage products and then operations, add a product, add an image, and whatnot. And they have relationships. So for example, there is no relationship between super user and add a product because a super user can do everything a product manager can do, who can manage products, who can add a product. So these, all of these things in here are items. They're items. These right here are the relationships. And then the third aspect of this is an assignment to a user. Now we know that we only have the one user, Kurt Clement. But we need also to have these authentication tables built. And so what we're going to do is we're going to get the schema, which tells us what the SQL statements are. When we go over here to the framework, we can go into web. And we, here we have authentication. Now, authentication has all the PHP files for authenticating users. And then we have the SQL schemas here. This is MS SQL. This is MySQL. This is the one that we're, we're using here. You go SQLite also. Double click on there, and it gives me the schema. So I'm going to create this table here just by copying, going over to PHP my admin, going to the SQL, and pasting it in. Now I have to tell this what database to use. Say use Amazon here, which means use the Amazon database, semicolon, it says I got a new statement here. And I want to hit go. It added the table. Now, unless I hit refresh here, I'm not going to see it over here on my list, but I'll hit refresh. And you can see now I've got this auth item. Well, I have two other tables I've got to create. That's just creating the items. Here I've got to create the child, which is the relationships. Again, use Amazon. Now, this has a composite primary key, and G doesn't like that. So just for now, I'm going to delete that so that I can use G to create the models. Added that table. We got our last table here, which also has a composite key.
I'll delete the composite prim uh, primary key and hit go. Okay, so I've created tables. I'll refresh this so I see that I've got auth item, auth assignment, and auth item child. Okay, so let's go into auth item here. And what I want to do is I want to add some items. Now remember here, I just said all of these are items and they have, uh, it goes from zero to type zero, type one, type two. So I'm gonna add a super user and a product manager. And the way I'll do that is just to again here in PHP my admin, I'll say super user, type two. And then product manager. Type two. And now when I go into that auth item child, and so I can see that there's two types of uh, um, items. One's a product manager, and the other one is a super user. Now, now what I need to do is I need to have an assignment here, and the assignment I'm going to make is I'm going to say that. Um, super user is user ID 1. Now where did 1 come from? 1 came from this right here, user ID 1. And I'm even going to delete this user and delete that assignment later. Now I've got to do an item child. An item child is a relationship. So an auth item is a relationship and I'll say that the parent is super user and the child is product manager. Okay, so now I've got all of my things in my database just to get started here. So I got an auth item child, which if I look at it, says that the parent is super user and the child is product manager, just like my layout here. If I go to my items, I notice that I have two, super user and product manager. And if I go to my assignments, I say that user number one is the super user. So that's your very, very basics here. We've, we've got some other things that we've got to do. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to build some models. And I'm going to do that by going to the G tool. Okay, so let me create some models, model generator. And we know that the auth item and the auth assignment are all there, but I could just put a star here and say, go get me all the tables. And if you notice here that it's saying, uh, users is already created, I don't need to change that. And these products and manufacturers are ones you haven't done. These are the three I'm most concerned about. So let's generate all of these right now. So we'll generate all those models. Now the important part of this is once I've created the models and we'll show them here, when we look at our models, we got all of our models there which should match all of our tables here and it does. But remember that I deleted the composite key and I need to go back and put that in. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do all of this. Go back over to PHP my admin, and here's where use Amazon really comes in handy, so I don't have to write it several times. I've got all of my drop the table if it exists and create the table. Okay, but what happened here is we drop the table, so when I go to my auth item, it's empty. Do you remember what those are? Well, let's reinsert those in again. I got a super user. And a product manager. Both of type 2. I've got a, a relationship where a super user is the parent and the product manager is the child. And I've got an assignment. 
where user ID one is a super user. Okay. Now I've implemented everything at the database level. I've created the models, but I have to load the model. So where we'll load the model here is we're going to our main and right after the database, again, here's where loading all the components, sorry. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna, right after we load the database, we're gonna say we got this other uh, component to load and that's our authentication manager. And it says what class it is. It says it's connection to DB, which is this um, component right here. We save all of that and everything should work. And how are we gonna test that? Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to our user controller, which is in our administration module. And we'll go to our user controller. And we're gonna change all of this, which has a variety of different rights. We can go back and change that. We're gonna say we're gonna only have, only allow super users to do anything. So let's test and see if Kurt Clement can actually do anything here. So we go back to our database, we say administration, users, you're not authorized to perform this action. Well, why not? I'm logged in as admin. Oh, because I'm logged in as an admin. An admin is not in the database. So if we log out, log back in, Kurt Clement, and let's make sure the number's right. Now, I put in password and it's in the database, but I could not find myself. Oh, because we have to go to the user identity and authenticate and authenticate here with our user identity component. So user identity component, all it does is say, hey, I recognize two users, demo and admin. Well, I needed to go look in the database and authenticate. Okay, so I deleted everything in that uh, user identity class. I've added this private variable underscore ID, which I'm going to use. The first thing I do is I'm gonna create this uh, function, or in this case, because it's a class, we call it a method called authenticate, which will be called by several programs within Yi. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a record from the user's model, which means I'm pulling it out of the database, and I'm gonna say, find the uh, records where the username equals this username. Now this is getting called by the login controller, so this username is set in the login controller. And I'm saying that if the a record equals no, then pass up the error username invalid. It's not else if the record is not if the password on that record is not equal to the password I'm passing in, then pass up that error code. Else, if all of that works, that means that I am authenticated. I want to set this, the private variable underscore ID, to the record ID. Now remember, Kurt Clement with password, the ID is one. And then I want to pass up the error code none. Finally, I want to have um, a function get ID that returns just this ID, this private variable. Now when I do that, I'm actually going to look up in the table uh, for the user ID to, to authenticate it. So now let's try it. We type the password just to make sure. Well, I'm logged in now as Kurt Clement, read from the database. Now let's see if I am authorized. Looks like I'm authorized to view the users. How about, can I create the user? Yes. And this is all because when I go to the user controller, I say that any super user can do all of these things. Now, if I were not a super user, and I could change that really quickly on the back end here, and under auth assignment, I could say that this, um, and I'll, I'll delete this and say that nobody is a super user, okay? Now when I refresh, I'm not authorized to perform this action. 
okay? Because I went to users and create. I'm not authorized because it only allows super users. Well, really quickly, I could go back, insert into auth assignment, super user with an ID of one. Then when I refresh, it does allow me to create. Okay, so that's some very, very basic uh, user authentication. Uh, we're going to build on that. We're going to add encrypted passwords because if you, if you look here and you go into the users and you see that my password is plain text here, we're going we're gonna to change all of that and we're going to get more complex with the roles and make some changes on how we add users to the table. But that's a very, very basic outline of how we've created users and we'll take it from there on the next video.